hear these words of grace from Psalm 33. God loves righteousness and justice, and the earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. Welcome to Evensong, an online contemplative worship experience patterned after the ancient form of evening worship. We are concluding our three-week look at a rhythm for following God. Love, listen, respond. This evening, we will engage in a guided meditation centered on justice and how we are called to be a part of God's justice in the world. So, I invite you to take a deep breath, breathe in love, breathe out peace, and let's worship together. Come live in the light, shine with joy and the love of the Lord. We are called to be light for the kingdom, to live in the freedom of city of God. We are called to act with justice. We are called to love tenderly. We are called to serve one another, to walk humbly with God. Come open your heart, show your mercy to all those in fear. We are called to be hope for the hopeless. Hatred and violence will be no more. We are called to act with justice. We are called to love tenderly. We are called to serve one another. To walk humbly with God. Sing. Sing of that great day when all will be one. God will reign and will walk with each other as sisters and brothers united in love. We are called to act with justice. We are called to love tenderly. We are called to serve one another, to walk humbly with God. We are called to act with justice. We are called to love tenderly. We are called to serve one another. Hear now this call to action. Jesus said, I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. So let us act justly. Jesus said, I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. So let us act lovingly. Jesus said, I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. So let us walk humbly with our God. May we see Christ in one another, that we may be healers and peacemakers in Christ's name. Amen. Hear now the good news from the Gospel of Luke chapter 4. When Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and as was his custom, he stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. 
the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. We began two weeks ago with love because love is the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. As Paul says in the letter to the Corinthians, without love, nothing else matters. Beautiful words, acts of justice, generosity. Without love, it is nothing. Love leads us to see our neighbors, to be with them in their suffering, to listen to their cries. Love leads us to turn towards God, who calls us and many beloved. From the place of listening, we are called to act with justice and mercy. We are called to respond to the cries of our neighbors. We are called to love as God loves. So today we will explore what it means to respond with justice to a hurting world. We're going to have a time of guided reflection but before that, I want to tell you a story of what justice and love might look like in our world. So hear this story now from Frank Rogers Jr., co-director for the Center of Engaged Compassion. He tells the story of James Worthington, whose inner city youth program offers young people an, an alternative to the deceptive lures of gang life in South Central Los Angeles. James tells about Raul Torres. Raul was a janitor and lived with his wife of 45 years on a modest corner lot in South Central LA. When Raul's wife died of a stroke, he was heartbroken and he actually retired from his job and put his energy into his rose garden. The Rose Garden was both a memorial to his wife and also an opportunity for him to have a second life, something to occupy his time and help him forget his grief. All the love and care that Raul used to give to his wife, he put into his Rose Garden and it continued to expand and blossom. One day Raul came out and found that many of his rose bushes had been vandalized. They had been ripped out by the roots, the roses had been picked off, and he was heartbroken. At first Raul didn't know who had done it, but he watched and he noticed that a local gang was coming by, driving near his house, getting out and pulling up his rose bushes. The vandalism continued to happen over and over again, and every time it broke Raul's heart even more. One afternoon when Raul was out in his garden, he saw one of the boys from the car walking down the street. The boy was around 10 years old and had been one of the youths to jump out of the car and start pulling up the rose bushes. Raul was angry, and his first thought was to run up to the 10-year-old boy and scold him for his bad behavior. How could you do this to something I love so much? His second thought was that he should call the police and report him. He was an eyewitness to the crime, and he knew that this was one of the boys who had done it. But as the boy was walking down the street, Raul caught a look in his eyes. As he made eye contact with the boy, he saw the loneliness, the desperation, the heartbreak that this boy carried with him wherever he went. And Raul's heart was softened. He knew that he couldn't scold him or call the police. And so instead he said hello to the boy and asked him to come over and take a look at his rose garden, at the bushes that were still standing. He could see the boy hesitate worried maybe that Raul was actually going to yell at him for what he had done. But instead, Raul motioned him to come over and started telling him about the roses, telling him which varieties were growing. And then he asked the boy if he would like to help him water the roses that were in the garden. Raul told the boy that he had a problem 
that he couldn't take care of all the roses by himself, and so he asked if the boy would like to come over regularly and help him tend the garden. The boy said yes, and the afternoons that Raoul and the boy spent in the rose garden were times where they were able to connect, and Raoul heard more and more of his story. The boy was being raised by a single mom. His brother was in prison for gang activity. There had been a retaliatory drive-by at the boy's house that had nicked his leg with a stray bullet. Raoul's compassion for the boy grew and their bond increased as they took care of the rose garden together. Raoul says that after inviting the boy to take care of his rose garden, it was never again vandalized and actually became a centerpiece in the community where other youth would come and help tend the garden. James, who tells this story, who now runs a center for youth in that same neighborhood, was the boy that Raul reached out to. He says that Raul's act of justice, of compassion and love, changed his life forever showed him what love looked like and helped him be able to share that love with others. After hearing that story, let's take a moment to center ourselves in a comfortable place as we spend a few moments reflecting on the people or places in our lives in need of compassionate justice. You might pause the video to get a blanket a glass of water, or to light a candle. Once you are comfortable, close your eyes if that feels okay to you. Take a deep breath in and inhale the presence of love all around you. Exhale a sense of peace out into the world. Take a few more deep breaths in and out, grounding yourself in love. As you continue to be present in this sacred silence, allow your mind to wander through the events of your life over the last week, the last month, the last few months. Where have you noticed a need for justice? Where have you heard a whisper to be the presence of love? Where have you felt a nudge from God? You might be calling to mind a particular person like James from the story, someone in your life that is hurting and in need of kindness and compassion. You might rest your gaze on a group of people in need of advocacy or presence. Maybe there is an organization already doing some of the work that you feel a nudge to do. And you might reach out and see how you can help. Maybe God is bringing to mind a cause or certain work that you are called to. For me right now, this is the work of anti-racism. Wherever your mind is leading you, pause and notice. If you are imagining a person, what might that person need? A listening ear? A ride to a doctor's appointment? Help doing paperwork to receive assistance? If it is a group of people, what are their cries? What nudge are you receiving to join with them in advocating for justice? If an organization or cause comes to mind, what is the next step you are called to take? Is God nudging you to make a call today, to volunteer, to commit to new learning or a specific kind of advocacy? As you listen for this next step, test out whether there is love present if you find that love is not there, circle back to breathing in love and exhaling peace and let that be your practice for today. Love is always an act of justice 
and cultivating love in your own heart is a step toward the world being more just. If you find love present with you, spend a moment telling God what your next step will be. Listen for God's response. If you feel God affirming your next step, offer God gratitude for the guidance. If no next step emerges, continue in a place of listening and love. Take another deep breath and open your eyes as you're ready. If you have paper nearby or if your phone is by you, make a note of your next step. Put it in your calendar, on your to-do list, or text a friend. We would also love to hear how God is working in your life, so drop it in the comments or send us an email. We would be honored to hold your justice work in our prayers. The work of justice involves recognizing when we have acted unjustly and confessing those actions to God. Will you pray with me, please? Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Friends, hear now these words of forgiveness. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, we can pray. Our Father, who is in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you now to gather something to eat, like bread or a cracker, and something to drink, like juice or water, as we celebrate the Lord's Supper together. When we pray the prayer of great thanksgiving, we remember that though our actions are often at odds with the justice that God desires, God has not given up on God's dream for a just world. Through Jesus Christ, we have been reconciled to God. And God continues to include us in his great work of growing the kingdom of God in our midst, a kingdom governed by love and guided by justice and mercy. And so we lift up our hearts and we give thanks to God. And we pray, blessed are you, O God, who with your word and Holy Spirit created all things and called them good. In Jesus Christ, your word became flesh and dwelled among us. Through Jesus' suffering and death, you took upon yourself our sin and death and destroyed their power forever. And you raised from the dead this same Jesus, who now reigns with you in glory and poured upon us your Holy Spirit making us the people of your new covenant. On the night before meeting with death, Jesus took bread, 
gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks again to you, gave it to the disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts, that in the breaking of this bread and the drinking of this cup, we may know the presence of the living Christ and be renewed as the body of Christ for the world, redeemed by Christ's blood until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at your table forever. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. This is the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and eat.
Just an unjust, a place at the table. Abuser abused with need to forgive. In anger and hurt, the mindset of mercy. For just an unjust, a new way to live. And God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy. Yes, God will delight when we are creators of justice, justice and joy. For everyone born a place at the table to live without fear and simply to be. To work, to speak out, to witness and worship for everyone's born the right to be free. And God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy. Yes, God will delight when we are creators of justice, justice and joy, justice and joy, justice and joy. Receive now this blessing. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. Go to love the world with deep compassion, coming alongside those who are suffering. Listen to the call that God whispers over your life. You are beloved. All are beloved. Respond by joining with God in the work of justice and reconciliation. You are a blessed and loved child of God. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.